Can you imagine if Art Simone and Scarlett Adams have to lip sync against each other tonight? Oh, the fandom would live. <laughs> It's a new day in the workroom, and I'm back with another episode of Drag Race Down Under. I am <laughs> excited to see this episode. I know I might be the only one that's excited to see it because a lot of you in the comments have been saying, you're done watching it, you're over it. And last week was the last straw. And I kind of get where you're coming from. However, I already started it, so I feel weird trying to like stop halfway through. So I'm committed. I have to finish this. And speaking of comments, I'd like to address two uh, specifically, such as One Love and Terrell. This type of negativity is not welcome here in my home. This is my little community. We're a family here. We love each other and we talk about Drag Race and other queer TV and cultural things respectfully. Okay, so Big Lip Frog, mm, yeah, I have a I have Big Lips. It's a popular feature of Black people. Is that a problem for you? Let's not do that. Anyways, let's get into this video. Trans people deserve more. I love you bitches, etc. The glamour bug. I love etc. etc.'s mirror message. She is always, well, they, let me just say they, because they're non-binary. They are always making sure that their message is coming across and everything is a little political and I appreciate it because initially drag was like a political thing, you know, it's a statement and sometimes you kind of forget it and it kind of seems watered down into just trivialness. So I like that her mirror, the, their mirror message, I like that their mirror message uh, included uh, trans people deserve better. This week was probably the first time the judges saw what I've got over you guys. You go, Electra. You just won and no one's even like congratulating you yet. They're like, yeah, I've been having a big name forever and now my the expectation of me is greater than what I can produce. Blah, blah, blah. Congratulations, <laughs> Electra. I love her. Pack what you've packed, you brought what you brought, so you have to win them over in other aspects. You know, there's this conception, like art saying you packed what you packed, you brought what you brought, so you have to win them over, whatever. There's a misconception, it feels like, where people think that going on Drag Race, it's all about the drag you brought with you, and it's all about the garments and whatever, and the wigs. Yeah, they want to see a polished looking queen, but at the same time, you have to have a lot behind it. We've seen so many queens that have beautiful gowns and beautiful wigs, come on and leave first or they just don't make it as far because it takes more than beautiful gowns to win. In my opinion, at least. People might have a different thought process on that one. What's your packing down under? The mini challenge this week was really cute. They had all the pit crew members come in and first of all, we walked in those short shorts. I was like, yum. But everyone looked a little extra buff, but they had animals in their pants. You had to guess what animal they had. It was a really cute mini challenge. However, it felt like a maxi because it was so long. And Maxi Shield won. And she got like $2,000 gift card to someplace, somewhere. I don't know. But it was cute. I enjoyed it. I'm a fabulous makeup artist, so I can make them all look fabulous. But some jobs are harder than others. This week's Maxi Challenge, the girls have to make over members of the Falcons rugby team, which is apparently a gay rugby team. I think this is really great. I was expecting firefighters for some reason, just because I know like in the past few years, there's, there've been a lot of forest fires down under. And so I was like, maybe they're gonna get firefighters, but I'm equally as happy with the rugby team. I think I'm gonna get Karen Wolf. Oh, there you go. <laughs> So obviously, we know how the game works. Maxi Shield won the mini challenge, so Maxi Shield got to choose who, what girl, what drag queen got what rugby player. And if I were in her shoe, I would choose the rugby player that similar, like favored me most, because Maxi is very short and stocky. So I go for whichever one of those guys that fit that bill. And as far as like placing the other queens with a rugby player, I'm gonna give everyone their opposites because it's a competition. 
The only one that I think is maybe a little bit suspect is Carl paired with Kida, because Carl's pretty. And Kida is... Kida's... Kida's a good friend. <laughs> Electra, you are shady. Kida is cute too, I think. Yeah, Kida is a cutie. Kida. All right. <laughs> it seems like none of the rugby players have ever been in drag apart from like dressing up as kids in their mom's clothes. Which is like understandable. Not every gay man is going to dress up in wigs and corsets and do all of that. A lot of them have never done it before. But thank goodness for Maxi Shields' partner for saying, you can take my beard if you want to, I trust you. Because otherwise she would have been F. The girls are so shady. I mean, yeah, Art, some of them are men. They're all men, you know? Um, I don't think you need to make a custom outfit for your drag daughter or for whoever you're making over to be considered doing better than the others because you already knew you are going to have this challenge before you even, like the minute they call you and said, you're in Drag Race, you know, okay, I need to find a costume that will double as like a family resemblance type situation. It's every single season. I wouldn't come on the show trying to make something the day of. That's like too much work. I just make, bring something with me that is one, stretch just so it can fit any body type. And two, uh, make sure the concept of the outfit that I'm bringing is something that does not require, you know, pleaser heels because I see uh, Maxi Shield and her partner like really struggling because a lot of people that they bring on the show for the makeover, they're not used to wearing stripper heels. So make sure it's a cute little thing that they can manage. Make sure the concept works and it's still fashionable and it's still you. But that's what I would do. Hey, uh, you know you gotta put your uh, rugby player in drag, don't you? Oh, so we're still waiting for an eyebrow to draw. <laughs> it is beyond me how long Art Simone sat there doing her own face while her rugby player's eyebrows dried. I agree with Electra. like when you're putting someone in drag on the show, it's more than just slapping on makeup and slapping on a dress and being like, let's go out there and win me this, um, you know, maxi challenge. It's a connection thing. It's, it, it's a nurturing motherhood type of thing. It's like, oh, this is your first time in drag? Well, let me tell you, this is what I'm doing and this is why I do it. And what does drag mean to you? And how do you feel like throughout the transformation? That's what I like to see with this challenge, and I don't know if Art was giving that in the workroom. I mean, it doesn't matter within the grand scheme of things for her winning the challenge or not, but as a viewer and the connection I build with the girls and the queens and the people and whoever's on the TV, I appreciate that part of it, and I didn't get that from Art. Side note, why did Elektra choose purple? Like, she's never done that before, so I'm curious to see how it's going to turn out. Are we going to get another, like, Crystal Method, you know, family resemblance type of tease? Uh, Bert and Ernie, maybe? I don't know. Let's see. And what? And what, RuPaul? I don't know about this outfit. The boots are a little weird fitting. Um, I want to like it so bad. I want to like it so bad, but I just don't. It's like, it's not horrible, but it feels like you're trying to do something else and it's not landing the way it should. It's not ugly though. It just feels weird. I'm not used to it. Maybe just, that's just it. I'm not used to RuPaul trying to be hip and young and fashion forwardy so bad and it's like if the if you were in the 90s and you're trying to be hip and fashion forward not like being hip and fashion forward in 2021 you know what i mean yeah it's a look category is drag family resemblance okay they look like twins 
sometimes they say drag family resemblance. It doesn't always mean mother, daughter, sister, um, sister, sister, whatever. Kira and Fedamine look identical. The makeup is great. It's obvious that Kira painted her face onto this person. And the outfits were identical. Then they revealed into very similar outfits. Black and white stripe, black and white polka dots. And Fedamine was stomping on the runway in her heels. It was beautiful. I think this was amazing. This was a really great job. Kira is probably not going to be in the bottom or safe this week. She's definitely in the top, I believe. Electra Shock and Re Reaction look amazing. Now I see why they did, why Electra was doing the purple. I like it. They look very twin-like. I will say Re Reactions lips are a little bit different, or maybe it's, or something is a little off with the face. I don't know if the eyes are a little bit higher, the lips are a little bit... Maybe it's just the shape of the person's face, that, but the makeup is still pretty much the same, but something looks a little different to me. I don't know what it is. I'm looking at the two of them and I'm like, there's something up. I don't know what it is, but my eyes are going somewhere else. But apart from that, the outfits are identical. They, I feel like everyone in, well, not everyone, there's only two people coming on the stage so far. But so far, it feels like people are going for twin and identical looks so that it's harder for the judges to be like, oh, you look different. So if you give the same face and the same outfit, it's like, B -b we're twins. What do you mean we don't look, re we don't resemble, you know? Which I think is a smart way to go about it. Um, it leaves less room for error and less room for Michelle Visage to say something stupid like, you're in black hair, she's in yellow hair, oh, I don't see the resemblance. Yeah, I love this. Love, love, love. Maxi Shield and Silhouette. I don't know if a Silhouette name, like, why Maxi Shield and Silhouette? Could, would there, can you tell me in the comments, is there a different name you would have given Maxi Shield's partner that would go closer to Maxi Shield? It just seems so far apart. I don't know. Anyways, they look adorable. They look adorable. The outfits, I would never have chosen those outfits in a million years. It's not my tea. <laughs> but on them, it's fun. It's camp. It's hilarious, but it's not ugly. It's like, I don't even hate the colors on them. It just seems fun and light. And they look like twins. Like, they're the same people. And I love that she was able to walk in the shoes. It's working out for Maxi. I think Maxi's gonna be safe. I think she's gonna be all right. Art and Craft Simone. Craft Simone. I get it. Arts and crafts. Yeah, it works. <laughs> they both look great. Don't get me wrong. They both look really good. However, I don't see a big family resemblance. It's like they look great apart but would i think they're related no and i don't know if art put craft in the slipper outfit because i guess putting slippers on a dress is crafty and why was she in a kind of mary antoinette let them eat cake corset and hair i don't see the resemblance in the outfits and the you might be in danger girl this was not giving what it was supposed to give. This was not what the brief required. I feel like you spent too much time on your face and not enough time conceptualizing what you're gonna actually put down the runway. Scarlet and Sapphire Adams. Okay, so Sapphire looks like Scarlet's wonky, crazy aunt, or maybe a drunken mom, and I think it's fun. The face is definitely painted the same way. So the face, you can see the resemblance in the face. The outfits are very similar, just different colors. Um, I think it works. The only thing is the wig on Sapphire is a little bit, it's not as quaffed and done up as Scarlet's wig. And I don't know if I like that or maybe, I don't know. Something's off with the wig for me. And maybe you could have padded the butt or like put a corset on the person. Like, I know you said you made this corset from scratch in the workroom, but it looks a little too bulky in the back. It could have cinched Sapphire some more, in my opinion. Because you want the person you're bringing out there in drag for the first time to look as stunning as possible. You don't want the garment to look bulky and bunchy and you don't want the wig to look like it wasn't styled. You know what I mean? 
Can you imagine if Art Simone and Scarlett Adams have to lip sync against each other tonight? Oh, the fandom would live. <laughs> Karen from Finance and Debbie from Reception. I like the name. The name, it, it works. I don't really know what to say about this. It's like, the outfit is Karen. The hair is Karen, I guess. But I don't see like a huge family resemblance in the face. And it just feels, it doesn't feel, it doesn't speak to me. And that's it. As a viewer, it does not speak to me. Let me know what you guys think. Did you love this one, Karen and Debbie? Like, where are you living? Because I'm not living. Yeah, I'm gonna move on from this one. It's not ugly. It's just like, in the face, something, there's a disconnect. I don't feel like the makeup is the exact same way. Um, or maybe the glasses are, is just hiding too much of the face. So it's hard for me to tell if they look alike or not. Uh, yeah, something's off. Debbie doesn't even look like she's having fun. Okay, so it's very evident that Kitamine is winning this challenge. So, good for you, you broke your ducks. <laughs> That's a saying. Um, if you know what it means, you can comment down below. Uh, so good for her. However, I feel like the judges are like trying to get rid of Electra and I'm kind of pissed. If that happens in the next couple of minutes on this show, I am throwing something. Because they're like, oh, they looked alike. There was obvious family resemblance, which is the freaking brief. Like, that is what the challenge called for. However, the makeup skills were not amazing. Like, girl, shut up. Shut up. You did not say, come out here with the best makeup. Bob the Drag Queen won a whole freaking season with busted makeup. Like, what's your deal here? If you want to get rid of someone, just be like, you know what, this is a week. I want her to go home just because I want her to go home. So it doesn't matter what she does. And how is RuPaul going to say, oh, when is she going to show up and be like, I'm the queen of this competition? She won last week. She won. What are you, you're making it seem as if she has been messing up the entire season and she's never done well in a challenge. I just cannot deal with it. These judges are on something meanwhile art simone did not even have a family resemblance in the slightest and it feels like they're going to excuse it meanwhile scarlett adams had some family resemblance there was some but her family member looked really unpolished and it seems like they're willing to forgive the bad hair and the bad outfit, but they they seemed more upset about the bad make, the bad makeup from Electra, and I don't think Electra's partner's makeup is that bad. I just think it's the way Electra's partner's face is set, meaning like the way they they their resting faces. It's very like, hmm, you know, when you have a resting face that's very, you know, serious and stern. It tends the makeup that's painted on you tends to just go down with your face as your face is relaxed. I think what Electra should have done is painted the makeup very, you know, like paint a smile on her face basically. Uh, so that wouldn't have been an issue. But I just don't get it. And there's so many of them that I didn't even get, like why they were gagging. How I see it, everyone was, everyone that you want to put in the bottom except for Kita, I, I can see that and it's like fine but I don't think Electra should be up for elimination. You did the house of Priscilla proud. You're safe. Art Simone did the house of Priscilla proud. She's safe. Really? Okay. And y'all just said blatantly there was no family resemblance in a comp in a challenge that required specifically one thing, family resemblance. Wow, RuPaul. Mm -mm. That's not cute. That's not cute. We are currently downsizing, but you remain a valuable asset to the company. Yippee, Karen is safe too. Congratulations, you're the winner of this week's challenge. Duh. I'm sorry, my dear, but you are up for elimination. So Maxie's in the bottom. 
let's just see if they're going to put my good sis Electra in the bottom with her or Scarlet. Let's see. Scarlet Adams. I'm sorry, my dear, but you are up for elimination. I have not had my frown turned upside down so quick in a while. <laughs> Scarlet's in the bottom with Maxi Shield. I'm like, I'm not happy for her downfall. I'm not that type of person. No, I'm just happy that they did not put Electra in the bottom. I didn't care who else got in the bottom. It could have been Karen. It could have been Art, whoever. I just didn't want Electra to be in the bottom because I didn't think it would have been fair. And okay, that's how the cookie crumbles. Let's see what Miss Adams has up her sleeve against Miss Shield. The lip sync was pretty interesting. I won't say that it was like the best lip sync I've ever seen. I haven't seen many amazing lip syncs on this show so far. I don't know what the style of drag is down there. Some people say it's very kitschy kitschy coo, very meow meow meow. I don't know, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> uh, they were both pretty decent. Scarlet did a split and she took her clothes off. So there was that. Uh, Maxi got a lot of airtime during the lip sync. Um, who should win this lip sync? I really don't have a favorite in this lip sync. Let me know who you thought should win. Well, I'm about to find out right now. Let me play it. But let me know if you agree with whatever RuPaul says or not. Scarlett Adams. Shantae, you stay. Maxi Shield. Sashay away. Uh, seems like an outcome that would happen, yeah. Because, yeah. Form your own opinions, yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and go over to my Patreon where I do a lot more videos. If you want to get to know me personally and see my behind the scenes thoughts and the process of how I get this show done and I get ready, go over there. Bye. Hey, beautiful humans. I have so much more content. Come on, watch my shit.